Ciao and welcome to Geo's Paintbrush, where five minutes is all it takes to be blown away by one of the world's greatest artists. Tuscany in the fall, more striking, more beautiful than any art made solely by human hands. In the opening, we were at Castello di Verrazzano in Chianti, overlooking the Gravy Valley, just about 40 minutes out of Florence. Dana was working the camera. What a wonderful little winery. But back in Firenze, for me, it was all about the art, and tops on my list this time was a trip to the Bargello to see Michelangelo's drunken Bacchus, a sculpture in marble standing just over six feet high, crafted in Rome in the late 15th century, when Michelangelo was just 22 years old. What I love about this piece is how it embodies in a single sculpture all that makes Michelangelo and the Florentine Renaissance groundbreaking and relevant today, more than 500 years after its creation. Dionysius, as he was more commonly known to the ancient Greeks, was the Roman god of wine, joy, and theater. His role was to help demonstrate how one could find relief from his worldly cares, seek comfort, unwind, get away from it all, even if just for a while. And Michelangelo, demonstrating the new realism of the Renaissance, as opposed to the otherworldly, one-dimensional portrayals of divine figures of the Middle Ages, gave the cardinal who commissioned this work a fleshy, hiccuping, somewhat unstable god of wine, struggling to hold it together, teetering backward, staggering, eyes rolling up into his head, supported by a satyr, half human, half beast, who is mischievously munching on the god's own grapes. It's no wonder the good cardinal ultimately took a pass on the sculpture, and it ended up in the collection of a banker. But more than demonstrating the period's commitment to reviving classical realism and the male nude, I've read that Michelangelo even broke off Bacchus's penis on purpose to make the work appear more realistically ancient. Michelangelo's drunken Bacchus, upon closer inspection, seeks to revive the ancient god and his universal appeal in every time and every culture by incorporating him into a more modern Christian context, overindulging, embracing the sensual, worldly pleasure, seeking escape, results in a lack of self-control of one's senses, a degeneration of the physical body. In a stroke of genius, one can actually see, within this puffy and somewhat effeminate Bacchus, the idealized male form, at least what it used to be. And, as suggested by the lion skin in Bacchus's left hand, the skin, all that remains of a once powerful authoritarian being, a bitter demise. What's the relevance of this sculpture today? For me, it remains a vital work beyond its significance to art history, because the basic human desire to escape, to check out temporarily, to forget life's trials for a period, whether by altering one's sensibility through drink, or by losing oneself in a good book, a play, a film, or music, remains as powerful today as it was for the ancients. And as many writers have pointed out, the miracles of Bacchus, turning water into wine and rising from the dead, for instance, were later incorporated as key miracles performed by Jesus in the New Testament, again bridging two worlds, reviving the richness of the classical era, while at the same time lending recognition and even credibility to the new post-pagan world. And yet, as Michelangelo reveals in Drunken Bacchus, indulging this need comes at a cost, the loss of the ideal form in life. In the end, I think this sculpture is about man's ultimate frailty and imperfection, just how far we come from achieving the platonic ideal. But I don't find it the least bit discouraging or sad either. Instead, it seems to me that the young Michelangelo treats this subject with just the right touch of playfulness, of humor, of irony, as we accept our fate with a toast. Grazie mille e ciao. Like I could when I was born, it's so 